Before I got into trading, I thought the only way to make money was either one, be a Wall Street day trader who has some secret formula for success, or two, buy stocks and hold them till you're like 55. But then I discovered swing trading and that really changed my whole perspective on the stock market. I realized that you can make money without having to hold stocks for crazy amounts of time, as well as you don't have to trade them every five minutes. It was the perfect medium for me and I wanna share this knowledge with you guys so that way you can also learn how to swing trade. I also work a nine to five job, so if you do the same, this is the perfect video for you. So without further ado, let's jump in. I realized in my mobile video, I went over, of course, the mobile setup, but I didn't show how to do it on desktop. So I'm gonna be showing all my indicators and everything I use on desktop, so that way you're able to use it and follow along. And if you're new to Weeble, welcome. But don't fret, you can actually use the indicators and everything I'm telling you about today with just the platform without even having to sign up. I have a link down below that you can use to get two free stocks. These stocks can be up to 1,850 bucks, so good luck. And by using my link, you'll be supporting the channel, so thank you. Now, before we even discuss trading, it's super important to get your mind right. The methods I'm teaching you are not for quick and easy money. You're not gonna become a millionaire overnight. It takes time, practice, and discipline to grow your account, but I'll help give you some tools to get you on the right path. This video will simultaneously function as a day in the life of a nine to five swing trader. So since I'm primarily based in California, my day actually starts at 6 a.m. The market opens at 9.30 Eastern time, but on Pacific time. That means 6.30 a.m. for me. So when I reach my trading desk at six in the morning, the most important thing is getting my mind right first. So I'll spend about five minutes doing a quick meditation on an app like Headspace. I'll boot up my coffee machine and get some coffee in my system. And I also do a little bit of stretching to get my body a little bit more limber before I hunker down and start looking at all these charts. I'll run my scanner the night prior, the details of which can be found on a video I'm linking to on the top right. And I have those tickers ready in my notebook. Let's jump now into what I'm actually looking at. Let's start with the actual indicators we're gonna be using for Weeble Desktop. I downloaded the most recent version of Weeble I could find. I heard from a subscriber that there was a bit of, of a concern that Weeble might have moved some indicators around or made it a little bit more difficult. So let me show you how to set it up on the most recent version. So the first thing is changing over to candles. So if you click on the line style, go ahead and click candles. These are a lot more descriptive than the actual line chart. On the far left, there's an option for indicators here. So go ahead and click that. We're gonna wanna use the MA, the MACD, and the RSI. Standard MACD and RSI is fine, so don't need to change that. It looks like Weeble was able to actually pull my indicators from last time, but let me just show you how to change this. So if we go to edit indicators on the top right, we wanna change this to nine, 20 and 180. Don't worry about these last three. Then go over to style and check off the 9, 20 and 180. You can change the colors however you want, but I'm using sort of a blue for the nine day, a yellow for the 20 and a red for my 180. Then just hit done. And now we're set up for trading. As a quick refresher, the MA smooths out movement of stock prices and by doing so, it helps us find entry points. The nine day is finding our price strength and the 180 determines our price direction. The 20 MA is used for extra support and I'll show you an example of that later. The MACD incorporates the stock's momentum to help determine a good buy-in point and the RSI is helping determine if a stock is overbought or oversold. So ideally we want RSI below 50 if possible. The process for the entry is first the daily chart to examine the stock trend and health and then the hourly chart to actually place the trades. An example in the past arc at this point had recently closed above the nine day MA here on the daily chart and the RSI and MACD look good. So only then do we jump into the hourly chart. On the hourly chart, it's above the nine day MA. And again, the other aforementioned factors are looking good. So you'll set it as a limit order for the earliest hourly candle above the nine day MA. You'll wanna use about three to 5% of your account for a trade that you're confident about with these indicators and set up. You can use more if you're more confident, but I'd advise not to use more than 10% of your portfolio for any one trade. So set your quantity and then hit trade. Now remember, the premise of swing trading is that you hold these overnight, but stocks can be driven by news, fear, and more, and thus sometimes stocks don't always behave, even if everything you did was perfect. This is why I favor stocks that recently closed above the MA on the nine day daily chart. Now a large gap between the MA and the candle shows price strength, but there's also room for it to fall below the MA. So if you're wrong or too late, it could take a while for it to drop below the MA, which is our sell signal. Versus if you're early, there's less room for it to fall before it hits a sell signal. 
As a reminder, if a stock fails our setup more than two to three times in the past few months, I'd recommend trying to find another stock as it can be more stressful to hold these types of stocks. They're less predictable. Let me show you an example of a pre-market fail and also why you should only trade stocks above the nine day EMA. If you've used my setup, you know that now is not a good time to buy a lot of stocks, including ARK, Tesla, but let's look at ARK. So you can see it's below the nine day EMA on the daily. And what I'm about to show you is exactly why you don't wanna trade stocks that are below the nine day EMA. Let's say you saw this and you decided to try to buy this stock anyway, and you opened up the hourly chart to examine an entry point. You can see this candle opened above the MA on the hourly chart, but then when the market opened at 9.30, it failed almost immediately. So not being above the nine day MA on the daily can lead to bad overall movements on the hourly. That's why I say it's always important to look at the daily first before you open the hourly. So I try to make around three to four trades with different percentages of my portfolio within 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Once 9 a.m. hits, I'm giving all my time to my job, so I kind of take my eyes off the market. That doesn't mean that I'm completely blind, though. I have alerts set up as well as checking in intermittently throughout the day. Let me go over my alert and then my exit strategy. So on the top right, you can go to alerts. I keep it super simple. Stocks that I love or stocks that I'm already in or waiting to get in. I want to see that 10 day crossover. They don't have a preset for nine days, so we'll have to use 10 day. But if it surpasses the 10 day, that's a point where we might want to consider getting in. And if it crosses below the 10 day, of course, that's a point where we want to consider getting out. So just because the alert hits doesn't mean I immediately buy or sell. Rather, it alerts me that it's entering a range where I should either consider buying or consider selling, which is exactly what I'm waiting on for ARC. I really can't wait for it to come back above the nine day. My take profit slash exit strategy is pretty straightforward. If it crosses under the nine day MA with deprecating factors, I then switch over to the hourly chart. And the first candle that's under the nine day MA on the hourly chart is my exit point. I do sometimes use stops. I'll use a trailing stop loss. I don't use regular stops as they're a little bit too rigid for me. So I tend to use a trailing stop loss with a two to 3% sell point. The issue with any type of stop loss is that, and everyone will tell you this, they're victim to fast movements. So panic sell-offs will get you caught in the trailing stop. So I only use these as a last resort if I really cannot watch my stocks for a certain period of time. I really do believe that mental stop losses are better if you're disciplined. As I mentioned before, the beauty of swing trading is that you don't have to be glued to your screen, but it's super important to stick to a plan. So make sure you're disciplined about that. I know a lot of people just say, hold, 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 buy the dip, just hold. But the problem is that's not really smart trading. That's actually pretty dangerous to do. Sure, in the future, you might make that money back if you're lucky, but if you follow your signals, you could actually save yourself from losing a lot of money. Yes, it's technically an unrealized loss, but if the stock never recovers, then you're pretty much screwed. After the market closes and work is over, I usually spend about an hour reading through some articles on Benzinga.com as well as Yahoo Finance, just to keep on top of the news on tickers I'm really interested in. And after that, I kind of just disconnect from the market and do things that I really enjoy such as making music, spending time with my wife, cooking, riding my motorcycle. It's important to make time to detach from the market and focus on other things going on in your life as well. You wanna be educated, but getting obsessed with the market can be detrimental to other areas of your life and your mental health. So know when to take a step back and enjoy other things in life. Well, I hope this video was useful for you. Thank you so much for watching. If you can leave a thumbs up or subscribe, that'd be greatly appreciated. I'm excited to make more videos for you guys, and I hope that you guys like the, the new setup I have here. I also have a different mic here, so hopefully it sounds a little bit better. But yeah, I'll catch you on my next video, and as always, keep on making great trades.